What's up, everybody? It's Leet, and we're back for some more Witcher. And last time, we made it through this Salamander base a fair ways. And, well, took down some enemies along the way, of course. But unfortunately, we ran into a couple of issues with the game crashing, and so we're going to have a little bit of a repeat here. But we'll get through here quickly enough. Just see into the future a little bit and predict that, you know, we're going to have some friends coming through here. Maybe we're going to have a fight against some of these guys. Not these guys. These are folks. The guys that were standing in front of that other portal-y thing we were peeking at over here. These people. These people are not going to be too happy to see us. Eternal fire, fill my heart. So, uh, yeah, let's charge. To victory. Oh, damn it, damn it. Nope. Really hoping we were gonna get our one hit kill in there. Because it seems like, for whatever reason, with this new sword that we've been using, it becomes an option, or not so much that it's optional, but it becomes something that just happens more often than it had in the past. There we go, like that. Didn't work that time, though. Hold on. We just, uh,. You know, like, do this, and then do that. And that should take care of you. Then, unfortunately... Oop, I was gonna say, we do not have any other endurance available to use another sign. But we can do this the old-fashioned way, too. Not a problem. Especially if we have some friends helping us out. But, you know, for good measure. Why not do a little bit of that? Mage, I would like to get rid of. Oh, how dare you! I, I don't have the endurance to take care of you. And this does hurt a little bit, admittedly, when you have your friend helping yourself out. Nope. Oh, man. Alright, and uh, in case that wasn't clear, yes, we did just crash again. So, a little bit of a case of deja vu all over again here. But, at least... Fortunately, we don't have to re redo too much here. So it's only a few minutes worth of stuffs. Also, uh, we can't we can skip it. Okay, yeah. You know, not that we really want to skip the dramatic entrance and all that stuff, but I mean, we, we have seen it several times. All right, I would like to deal with you, perhaps first. <laughs> well, your wish is my command. Just, uh, may not be on this plane of existence that you see those corpses. Sorry, buddy. Uh, let's, uh, do something like this. There we go. Yeah, so I think the one thing we have learned, we didn't know this already, is that for whatever reason, on this level, we absolutely must save at every possible opportunity. Because apparently, if we don't, well, we are subject to crash and subject to redo a lot of things. Do I jump that combo, rush it too quickly? There we go. You're taking care of you. Might be the last person here. Technically, we can do heavy stance on you. Not that it's going to matter too much. I mean, we have about five people fighting you. Okay. So, one thing we've also learned is that we can take the time to loot here. Funny, because I'm on the order. We can take the time to loot here. Because the thing is, we're not going to have the opportunity to do so afterward. So, seize the opportunity. I wouldn't mind an ale. Eternal fire fill my heart. Not like these guys have amazing stuff on them. But 10 coins is something. Ew, something. And I think right about now is when we probably ought to save. Certainly after every fight, basically, is what this is going to come down to. Because we have at this point crashed. Five times on this level, something like that. White Wolf, we've been expecting you. 
So, also we here. have Good. seen this we as well. This. Ha, you've learned nothing from our last meeting. Professor you may be talking trash in the middle of your discussion here. Fire. In the middle of your speech. Is aligning with the grand plan. Should you so, I mean... Wisdom, you'll see ah, realized. sure, we'll, we'll still listen to you. What if I refuse? Witches are simple and sentimental. Excuse me, I took Blind out all of your little friends there. I don't know Geralt. where they're coming Simplicity from. People that showed up behind us. in the nose and sentimentality suits you even less. You can't deny that. You're too smart. Besides, who do you want to defend? Faltest, a monarch with more sins on his conscience than the professor has long words in his vocabulary? Faltest impregnated his own sister and let his offspring eat the city's inhabitants for years. Furthermore, during the war, he allowed Nilfgaard to plunder and torch neighboring allied kingdoms. What's your point, Javed? If not Faltest, then who? The Lodge of Sorceresses? You know not what those bitches did to influence post-war treaties. The resettlements, deportations, the unresolved matter of the Scoyatel and others. Your dazzling conclusion? Salamandra is not evil. Not more than those with the will to shape their own fate. Yeah, Salamandra isn't evil because all these other people are terrible too. And even though we do horrendous things, we're going to say that it's excusable because nobody's perfect. It doesn't really work that way. If Salamandra is Sorry, not buddy. evil incarnate, then what of Javed? Immorality, rape, murder, treason. What would you call this creature? The future, evolution, or destiny? Scream yeah, nice try. Future. Not really. I'd rather fight a nightmare, even if it's hopeless. Remember the magic book from the tower in the swamp. Observe some useful spells. Defend yourself! I never expected so little challenge from a witcher. Yeah, and he continues to try to run away with the professor. One day, we will actually get the chance to fight them I lost the skirmish in, in the truth. Javed made off with the book. This marked the true beginning of our conflict. Are you making it look like he defeated us? He did not defeat us. Thank you very much. Javed escaped once not in the swamp, not here. Things are rather favorable. Three Salamandra bases annihilated. New allies gained. And the professor for dessert. Uh, nope. There we go. Are you well? What happened? What a blow. And a miracle you still live. Also, all those people behind me are conveniently just standing still and not actually fighting each other while we have this conversation. I'll find him. That was the silver sword. One moment, please. I wouldn't mind a nail. Yeah, you know, in the middle of fighting people, but I wouldn't mind a nail. Okay, so we have been through here once before. When, so surprisingly, guess what? The game did in fact crash. Assuming that's where we just came out from. And now we have these guys. We will proceed will die to... Slow. Oh, not stunned with that move, unfortunately. Oh, and we, oh, yikes. Uh, we are not at full HP. Far from it, in fact. Which is probably a bit of a mistake. Should have made more of a point of... Oh, okay, this um, animation unfortunately takes an eternity to complete. Fortunately, uh, that does mean we should be able to do it again. Each successive time it'll get a little bit easier because there will be fewer enemies to attack us while we're completing said animation. Such that, at this point, it's only a 1v1, so, yeah, I mean, turns out, we may have avoided a very difficult fight. Although, if we're about to go straight into a fight with Azur Javid and the Professor, then we are in trouble. Granted, we think we're in mid-fight here when we crash. Not the most recent time, but really the initial time. Did absolutely everything here. 
more or less everything. So again, given that, okay, we have to do this. So that means we've saved further than we've ever saved before. That's progress, right? You guys. How about you? The book in the swamp contains some interesting spells. Yes, I believe you already told me this. Including Alzor's shield, which even Professor can use to destroy you. Even Professor. Observe. I seriously doubt it. Goodbye, Geralt. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to be us against the Professor this no time around. No doubt life will end soon and how useless it's been. You'll die knowing you're an aberration. You're so full of shit, Professor. Why do you seek to prevent the creation of new witches? The answer's simple. You feel you have no rightful place in this world. So you, you admit your you're trying to make more witchers. I mean, that's pretty clear, spheres. right? But your creators erred. Know how? Um, sure, enlighten me. They failed to strip you of emotion. You were meant to slay monsters without making judgments, philosophizing, or nursing doubts. You're ineffective. Well, this ineffective, doubt-ridden historical freak is about to kill you. Let's dance. All right. Now, uh, granted, you did just get a, a free hit on us. And uh, this is the professor's hand. He will pay for his deeds. I hope so. Given how we were just talking about how it would be really helpful to have healed up, we probably should have done this before we fight a pretty significant boss. So, like... Oh! Also... Maybe good thing that we did take a brief moment here to pause and look around, because, you know, that guy's about to sneak up on us. As for whether he's... Oh, I was going to say, as for whether he's attacking us or the professor, not sure, but uh, can't help but notice. It appears as though they are getting summoned by the professor, and that does not work well for us. All right, so things may be about to get very dicey. They haven't already. I'm trying to think sign-wise, is there anything we would rather have at the moment? I mean, the stun is helpful, yes. If we'll actually use it, but uh, e I'm not so confident. Oh, also we should be using quick stance against you, I believe. If we could position ourselves such that we are only fighting the professor right now, I think that is probably the key. I'm assuming that- Ooh. Great if we could have actually gotten a hit in when he was doing that. It would also be great if we were not trapped in this corner against all of you simultaneously. Really hoping that if we are to take down the professor, then we will be done with this encounter and we won't actually need to fight these Tikamore warriors. Because, uh, if we do, in fact, need to get all of them, then this could be a little bit tricky. This certainly helps, being able to do that on occasion. And you know what? The professor does not have that much HP. I mean, neither do we right now, so there's that. But this might still be doable. If we can take him out with, like, half HP. Oh, yup. And we did. You've triumphed. Go ahead. And what does that say about our prospects against Azar Javid? You have what you wanted. Show mercy. Mm. Never hurts to ask. Yeah. Nice try, buddy. So you can parry arrows in flight. <laughs> Rumors are true. Oh. Uh, why do I feel like you set us up there? Because I think you set us up there. Uh... Uh-oh. Something tells me we're not any closer to getting out of here right now. Is that the professor? Who is this? Yes, it is. Uh. Okay... I don't think that's your normal warrior. That looks like a super special Kikamore. Uh-oh. More where this one came from? Just this. Just this, but, uh, well, I mean... It is Kikamore Queen. 
I mean, yeah, if there wasn't reason to start guzzling down food before, then there is now. Uh oh. I think you're about to pop up right next to us. Probably. Maybe. Or maybe this is all just a tease to let you know that, hey, uh, by the way, this thing's out there. And it might absolutely destroy you. Also, I would like to get that crate. You like it's a hidden crate that has a bunch of good stuff in it, and that is kind of sort of true. But also, like, you know, keeping a sword drawn right about now feels like that might be something that's kind of useful. To stop the uh, life regeneration effect up. No loot to take from the professor? <sighs> you disgust me. So, yeah, I'm gonna just finally take a moment to regenerate a little bit of our HP, and maybe we'll reflect a little bit on the many enemies that we have now slain, like how uh, the Professor is toast. In fact, track record. Probably still makes sense to do this, just in case. And yeah, I was not so optimistic of our prospects, given how we went into that fight with the Professor with, yeah, like, half-ish HP, if that. So that, I would have assumed, would have meant we were in trouble, but yet somehow, still able to emerge victorious. Yeah, with low HP, but we pulled it off. Granted, if we are going to have to actually fight that Kikimor Queen, then we're probably going to want a lot of life for that too, because even the warriors that we've seen in the past, those big guys that were helping the professor, those guys are tough too. All right. Is our HP perfect? No. Certainly not. But... Yeah. Once this one expires, I'll throw on one more round of food. Get us a little bit more. Regeneration. And then... Then we'll press forward, and I have no idea. I mean, this does look like a boss arena. So I would assume that we are still fighting the queen in here, but... Maybe not? Close nothing. Air this to close on us, and then it's like, oh, you're trapped here, and now also you're fighting the queen. Oh, look at that. Is that not exactly what just happened? I'm pretty sure that's exactly what just happened. Yeah. Um. Okay, so, silver, strong style. Something tells me that, oh, I did not think that was going to work. Also, we, despite, what? <laughs> Okay, um, I think we found who the real boss is. I think we found who the real boss is. Get one shot. So in that case, you'll excuse me, but uh, I think it is pretty meaningful for us to regenerate a little bit more HP because, you know, kind of like the boss can just tap us and we will crumple onto the ground, lifelessly. So, um, yeah. In order to not suffer that same fate again, I do think that means that we have to get to, ideally, close to full HP, because if that first attack is any indication at all, it looks like, yes, the Kikamore Queen is, in fact, more powerful or more dangerous than the Professor, Maybe lower HP, who knows, maybe different variety of attacks, but at least that attack there did far more damage than anything the Professor seemed to have done. So, yeah, if we have any chance of succeeding then we're going to need a lot more HP. We also, unfortunately, did not come in here with a bunch of any potions ready to go. Maximum endurance, yeah, that's something. Reducing toxicity to zero, also, I guess, theoretically something, but... It's not like we have a blizzard potion, the slow-mo one that's given us amazing success that we can lean on this time around. We don't have one. Nor is there miraculously any fire anywhere that we could use to brew up a quick round of other potions before this fight. So, yeah, that was probably something we should have done in anticipation of this. But, uh, give it a shot. Again, once we get a little more HP, though, because I did try to use the force push sign to basically freeze the Kikamore Queen. It looked like it did work, but it seems as though that attack 
is most useful for when you have multiple enemies simultaneously, because it's a little bit of crowd control, stuns people or knocks them away, knocks them down for a little while. And so it lets you kind of relocate yourself, make it so that you're doing a little bit of damage while people are temporarily incapacitated. So that's useful when there are multiple enemies. When you have only one enemy, yeah, I mean, it gives you a little bit of time to attack them, but if it's one big enemy, then that's just a little bit of damage that you're getting in when otherwise they might be attacking you simultaneously. In this case, now they aren't. So it gives you a little bit of an advantage, but not a huge amount. Seems like when you're fighting one enemy, the big thing is you use it near the end of the fight, and then once you get close to taking out the enemy, then you can start to use the... I mean, at that point, it's not a quote-unquote one-shot, but the finishing move is maybe a better way to phrase it. Once you get to relatively low HP on the enemy, you use that sign, it stuns them, allows you to use the finishing move and take them out a little more quickly than you would otherwise be able to, but that's only when they're at relatively low HP. So I think when you're fighting one enemy, or one enemy who's significantly more powerful than most of the others, then it makes may make sense to experiment a little more with some of the other signs here. And if I remind myself here, this is the, the force push. This one is the shield. Zone on the ground, which damages enemies. The flame. And the mind control. I would think the flame is probably the best for just outright damage. So early fight, I would think that would probably be best. But this is mostly speculation because we have, by and large, relied on the Force Push almost exclusively. The only real exception to that being when we fought the Golem a while back. So, I mean, that was, I guess, a similar scenario in which we had one powerful enemy. So, maybe that is something that we should take notes from. Alright, and... I mean... Not at full HP? Definitely not at full HP. I think... Who did something like... I wanna say 300 damage to us? No, not 300. <laughs> if she did 300 damage to us, then we'd be in real trouble. We have 300 HP right now. You know, I, said that. I meant to say 30-ish damage, which doesn't sound like that much. That's like 10% of what we have right now. But uh, at least in terms of the amount of our life bar visually that it looked as though she depleted with one hit, it did seem like... A lot more than just 10%. Or 10% of what we currently have. We have 400 maximum HP or close to that, so... Uh, let's throw on one more round of foods. We won't be full, but... I mean, we're at, what, like two-thirds now? Against what is actually the secret boss of this encounter? I wonder if Salamandra actually has anything to do with... The Kikamores, officially. I mean, they did appear to have built their base, their main hideout, in a humongous Kikamore pen? Nest? Whatever you call it for Kikamores. And you'd think, you know, that'd be one of the first things you'd try to check when you're deciding to whether or not to build an underground base is, are there any dangerous monsters in here that might dissuade us from doing this? But... No, apparently Salamandra just overlooked that, so... Oh, no, no, that seems a little strange. I'm gonna eat that, and then I'm gonna save here, because that way, if in fact it turns out that this is a really difficult fight, then we find ourselves not succeeding on our next attempt. And it'd be nice to know not to, you know, like, continue to wait over and over again to regenerate our HP. Ooh, almost. Almost didn't do it. Okay, so yeah, I'm hoping this is enough. I mean, if, if it turns out this is a crazy difficult fight, which it looks like it is going to be, and we need every single last drop of HP that we can get, then maybe we'll wait it out a little bit more and actually reach full HP. But, okay. So, we know you hit crazy hard. But we... Uh, 40. Whoa, oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so, what we saw there said 40 or something like that. Maybe it said 400. Maybe the 300 number I threw out earlier was actually correct. 
But I clearly, she just killed us in one hit. And no enemy that we've seen thus far is capable of doing that with that much HP remaining. So that makes me think that that is a guaranteed one-shot, an actual quote-unquote one-shot mechanic. Which would suggest that there is just something entirely different that we're supposed to do there, and that we aren't supposed to outright fight her. That there's some other mechanic at play here. I'm wondering if, you know, sometimes when you're in an arena like this, you'll see places where big, powerful enemies might come crashing into the walls and hurt themselves that way. That might be something that we'll want to see if we can do. But I think... At the very least, we've learned, don't run straight up to her. Don't do that. You are not supposed to. And we have to slowly whittle away her HP from afar, using a burning sign. Maybe? But most of all- okay. Where are we just supposed to run? Maybe we're just supposed to run. Is this technically supposed to be a chase? <laughs> Um, maybe I missed that hint there. Maybe I'm all, well, we're a witcher, we're a monster slayer, we can take her. When, in fact, the thing we're supposed to do is just flee. Because I don't think this area closes behind us. Actually, in front of us. This might be a... I can try toppling them to block the passage. Um... Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, not sure if that actually worked. It did. Okay, there we go. See, we're learning. May have taken us a bazillion attempts to learn that, and may now proceed to die to the normal enemies that are surrounding us, but we're learning. Oh, um, also, I don't think she's technically done yet. It does look like she can actually break through here. And oh my goodness. Um, 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 we're toast right now. We are very toast right now, maybe. Running, running, running. Also looting. No, not looting, just kidding. Uh, 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 um, uh, hold on. Map, map, map. Uh. Cave exit is not in this direction, can't help but notice. Maybe there's a little side alleyway over here that we might have been able to go through. It would have allowed us to, uh... Well. Break through here. I also did not see if the queen made it all the way through here. In which case, we might be about to get in a lot of trouble. Cornering ourselves like this. Yeah, she's over there. here. The moment she is not totally following us. Now she is, though. Uh, we're, we're about to die. Yep, because these guys are trapping me. Ah! Ah! The entire salamander base will land on my head. Oh, um... Time to look for a way out. Yeah, uh, totally was planned. Totally was planned there. Totally not panicking at the moment. Um, can we actually make our way through there? Don't know. Oh no, I'm dead. Maybe? Yes. Okay. So this is totally different from any other encounter that we've had. So, what have we learned? We've learned that, yes, you definitely do need to run from the queen. Noted. We need to break down those barriers, or break down the supports, so that the cave will basically collapse down in front of her. And it slows her advance, but it doesn't stop it outright. So, then, you make it through a couple of rounds of the narrow corridor, and then you make it into this big area here. Meanwhile, you're fighting all these little enemies that are trying to distract you from, you know, the fact that there's a gigantic Ikimura following you. So... You try to just kind of zoom through those guys as quickly as possible, that I mean, probably be a good time to use one of the potions to increase our maximum endurance so that we can use the signs more regularly. 
we've done that in anticipation, and that might have been a good thing. In fact, we might still be able to do that now, because I forget where exactly we saved. But then once you get here, it seems as though you have to hit this thing, or hit one of these supports in this major room, and it will collapse this entire area. If you're standing in there when that happens, then you are dead, as just happened here. But I think you want to do it when you're still standing in that little alcove there, or at least to the extent that you can. Maybe you have to make a quick break for it and run there immediately afterward, but I'm thinking that that's the only way that you can not flatten yourself. Because if you let me look the map, no, you won't. But earlier we saw that that little alcove that we started to go into, but weren't able to escape from, did say something that said cave exit right around there. So remind me where exactly this leads us off. Yeah, so just before we start this. So I think we do take this opportunity to significantly increase our maximum endurance. And then we do this. And, I mean, technically speaking, I'm going to probably want group style. Great if we actually had full endurance to start with. Because, well, that is going to become very, very relevant. Very, very soon. HP, I mean, it's kind of relevant, but not terribly in truth, because most of the dangerous stuff here is one-shot territory. You could have one HP, you could have 400 HP. Either way, you are going to die. Supports. I can try and tell you to block the passage. Okay, we did that. I'm gonna try getting all of the supports. Okay, and now this is the one where we have to run like crazy. Take it out. Did. Okay, so, uh, yes. Turns out if you know what you're doing, then that's actually not so bad. And the professor put valuable information in it? This was, like, the professor's pet? Maybe I'm missing something there, but supposedly that is the tie between Salamandra and the Kikamores is the professor has been experimenting with them? Professor's letter, ready to send. Kikimor's ire. Contains formula for a potion made for the Kikimor Queen's nerve. Well, there's the Kikimor Queen's nerve. Poison. Wolverine. Contains formula for potions. Great. Professor's report. And some coins. And things are happening. Oh, okay. Miraculously, there's now a way out. And again, pardon me, but uh, we're going to save here. And based on how everything is still shaking, I'm going to take that to mean that we are now unofficially on a timer. Oh, I was about to read the quest items. They're probably about to be relevant to the cutscene we're about to go into, because it did just say that Princess Ada was supporting Salamandra. And people might be about to talk to us about this, and we're not technically going to know all the details, but... Just know that Princess Adam was behind all this. Apparently. Yeah. Um... So, like... This is awkward. I should have known you discover who was behind the counterfeit royal seals. I was wrong to see you merely as a monster slayer. Uh, you and your politics. The better you know me, the more impressive I become. Any oh, chance right. you haven't deduced everything? Not much. I know you plan to stage a coup, assume power while your father is away. I also know you found an ally in Salamandra. My plans remain unchanged. Makes sense. And you won't stop me. I condemn you to death. Sentence to be carried out at once. Your Thanks. Highness. Sorry, Geralt. The right of state never sleeps. As the condemned, I have the right to a last wish. One last kiss from you. 
Oh, that's sweet. A scandalous request. But the last wish is a sacred custom. So be it. Uh, that's a trap, right? I think. You wish, Witcher. <laughs> what? Triss? <laughs> he has been spirited away. Someone will pay for this. Insert Studio Ghibli movie reference here. And, uh, well, something happened, and this doesn't look like we're in the same place anymore. That's not the Zima. Okay, child. Okay. Pay no mind to the strange man that disappeared out of up here, out of nowhere. Disappeared from wherever the heck we were before. You fell out of that strange hole in the sky. Indeed. Says I meddle. Perhaps. I know everything. Ask me. Uh, okay. I mean, I suppose that means it's kind of convenient that you meddle in that case. Yeah, so, like, let's start with the basics here. Where the heck are we? What is this place? This is the shore. Beyond lies murky waters, and beyond that, fields. By boat, you can get to the island. You do know a lot. I know everything. Ask me. Alright. City, though. The city on said island? I saw a city. The submerged city of an ancient race. Submerged? And monsters. Now fish people live there. I can oh. them, but the one sitting by the statue of the lady seems jolly. I'm losing track. What? And I sometimes take fish to the sick and poor elves when the Fisher King catches them. And on the island, you can meet the lady. More beautiful than Alina. She yearns, too. I'm completely lost. Yeah, what? How can you take care of us when you don't understand and you're always yearning? Um... Yeah. Is there some weird fish people take over coup that I'm not aware of? What's happened here recently? Alina, the village chief's daughter, will soon marry. For gold, mother says. Right. Mother also says Alina's sister, Selina, yearns for Julian. He's Alina's fiancé who lives at the inn. What does yearn mean? Okay, yeah, you are likes Julian. using the word yearn a oh. whole lot. Then Julian yearns for Alina, Selina yearns for Julian, and Alina likes Julian's gold, but yearns for Adam. Adults are stupid. Undeniably. Yeah. I know everything. Ask me. Okay, don't care as much about your village politics, at least not at the moment. Or relationship triangles and all that stuff. Do you know who I am? You have white hair, like every grandpa. Oh, you thank you. ugly, but I like you. Also, thank you. I know everything. Ask me. Uh, are we about to get attacked by fish people? Because I feel like I see something in the background that doesn't look so it's great right side. now. Yes, sometimes those evil fish people creep out of the water and drive off the funny fishermen. I hide under the fisherman's hut. Clever. Of course. All right, that appears to be everything. And yes, there's definitely a nymph, or a dryad, or something like that over there that we probably will not be able to talk to. So, hold on one moment while we catch up on some of those things that we picked up earlier that I did not read yet because I assumed that we were under intense time pressure as a cave was collapsing that we were in. So, one moment. Uh, this we need to read, and I think these two. Professor's draft letter. As are you, fool. Fail to perceive that the boy Alvin, upon whom we placed so much hope, is capable of opening unstable portals. Shortly after we captured him, the little guy simply disappeared. He was so scared, his legs could hardly bear him, and yet he gave us the slip. I spent a fortune finding the teleportation trail, so I know where he is, but I lack people. I can't possibly send my imbeciles after him. I've decided to send a man we need to test. True, I doubt his loyalty. Either way, we will recover the boy. Send your people to the village of Murky Waters immediately. That's 
supposedly where we are now. My messenger fails to return with Alvin by the time they get there. They should kill him and bring the child to you. To the laboratory. Hurry. Time is of the essence. So you're saying you sent someone to go find Alvin. And I mean, we've heard this before, that Alvin is really significant. I mean, from what we know, he's still with Triss, which is probably a good place for him to be hiding. Triss is pretty powerful and seems to be in the know with a lot of this stuff. But supposedly they're sending people here to go find Alvin, and I don't think we know who exactly they're sending, because they're sending that person here rather than to uh, Vizima. Berengar, okay, it was Berengar. Ah, I was wondering if that was going to be the case. Which would suggest that Berengar, well, I mean, technically he's a witcher. Witchers aren't supposed to take sides, so you could argue that he was just following the monies. But that does raise some questions as to what exactly our relationship with Berengar, who I believe we still think is our brother, what that relationship really is. Is he a foe? Is he a friend? Looks like it's going more towards former at the moment. All right, and this one, let's also read this. Professor's report. Regrettably, I must question the benefits of our alliance with Princess Ada. Okay, so there you go. In case it wasn't plainly laid out before, yes. There is absolutely some kind of alliance between specifically Princess Ada, it seems. Not Vizima as a whole, not the king, but Princess Ada. And Salamandra. That, that person is extraordinarily spoiled and very difficult to persuade. She proved incapable of introducing an effective state of emergency, and her ham-fisted forgeries set the Witcher on her trail. Okay, so let's see. That means the quote-unquote state of emergency with the plague? I mean, that was, I believe, the reason why that state of emergency was put in place. That was a phony... That was not actually something that the king put in place, which, given now we saw some forged documents that seem to be somewhat tied to that, that does make some sense. But as for why exactly she tried to do that, how would that help Salamander? Maybe she did that in order to lock down part of the city and make it easier for Salamandra to basically rule that area unofficially and grow. But she proved incapable of doing that, and yeah, the forgeries, we caught her on that. We'll straight to true to our word and encourage Ada's delusions for the time being. Yeah, so their, their alliance is very shaky, it seems. However, with Foltest returning shortly, we should proceed with the second part of our plan. Okay, still not totally clear what that is, other than presumably capturing Alvin. I presume I will myself resolve the problem with Geralt of Rivia. Well, you did and you didn't. Quickly and in a radical fashion. Do you really plan to send a Kikimor queen against us? However, I must insist you cease referring to him as... that. Appellations of that nature are entirely inaccurate, inappropriate, and painfully primitive. Defending us? Okay. Not sure why you take such issue with that. But as expected, the substances which were delivered allow us to control the Kikimors and their mother. Okay, yes, so they did find a way to actually control those monsters. That explains why they were there. At least the laboratory is working properly, making valuable use of the secrets of Terramore. We didn't have much chance to loot that area, again on the assumption that, technically speaking, we were supposed to make it out of there lickety-split before everything cra crashed on our heads and uh, we ended up dead. And that gives us more information about Azar Javid and the princess, and I would think the professor too, if we hadn't just killed him. So, oh wow, we were not quite in the middle of nowhere, but it felt like we were in the middle of town. So that girl was definitely, whoa, definitely out away from the established settlement when she found us. And given how zoomed out this map is, that would suggest this is a pretty humongous area. Let's talk to this Voidnoid priest. 
if, in fact, we can get out of here. Maybe get a little more information about what the heck is going on here. Assuming you're not confrontational. Or aggressive. Maybe you're confrontational. Oh, but of course. Pleased to meet you. I don't speak your language. Very well. Oh. Evidently. Let's talk. Kneel before lady. Speak easy. No kneel. Must be Dagonanamatai. No speak. So I'm to pay tribute to the Lady of the Lake? And that. Okay. Makes sense. I suppose. Yeah, I mean, this is probably not the time to be making any more enemies. All right. So we'll oblige. Next thing you know, we will be a fish person. Uh, this music is making me a little nervous, though. Okay. Not like that guy was about to just pull a sword from behind us and stab us in the back. Hey. So, uh... I would be helpful. Sure, let's lead off with that. in your language? Which Malal Bull? Which Malal? Which Malal Bull? Bull must be. No bull means idiot. <laughs> All right, then I'm which Malal Bull. Yes, so you be. <laughs> yeah, we might still be ourselves an idiot for all we know. But what is going on here? Everything all right? Great sadness. No peace in house. I'm sorry to hear that. Talk. Good bull talu. Okay, not very specific, but apparently great sadness. Got to gotcha. work for someone skilled with a sword. Good bull. Humans great enemies to Vodianoi. Hire Witcher Big for Vodianoi to kill. Witcher Big at Crypt. We love wish humans, yet humans swim our waters. Did I hear you right? Another Witcher? Yeah. Granol, exact. Disloving ghouls at Crypt. I need to speak to him. Farewell. All right. That may mean Berengar? Or some other witcher that we don't know of? Hold on. For the Lady of the Lake is a goddess of elder peoples, such wisdom and might. Her single utterance conquered hatred and greed. She spoke but one sentence, one sentence so filled with truth that they had no choice. No man and no Vordianoi could resist the ultimate truth. And so humans and Vordianoi sh shook hands and presented each other with gifts, forging a truce. Wondrous were the gifts indeed, gold bracelet belonging to the village's founder, richly ornamented by a true master's hand, went to the Voidenoid. And an old Voidenoid looked upon the lady's face and said, Thy word can make this word world sink, just as it made it burn, until only ashes were. And as the people saw a fine statue of alabaster appear, they were all speechless. And by the lake, in a wondrous land, a great feast was held. And so on the story goes. Uh, you know, like steal the food on our way out of here. Very love if we did that. Okay, so with that, I think this is probably a good place for us to wrap up on this video. We eventually successfully took down the Salamandra group in that base, including the professor. I'm assuming we're not gonna see him again because he does appear to be pretty dead at the moment, but you know, I wouldn't put it past him or Azar Javid to find a way to bring him back, so. Like, 95% certain we're not going to see him again, but who really knows? And from here on out, it looks like we're going to be on the outskirts of wherever this place is, and here's as though we're going to be seeing a lot more fish people. So, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.